we stop doing any of these things that are healthy over here, what happens to our body? We, let's say we stop exercising or stop moving, our body starts to break down. We stop eating right, our body starts to break down. And so, same thing with our diet, we have to make sure we're, we're, we're doing this right. Um, even though we're talking about them, even though we're talking about vitamin D tonight, omega-3 is probably the single most important thing that you want to have in your body. Everybody is deficient in omega-3. It used to be in, in all the food that we're eating uh, with wild game and animals through, through food processing, through, uh, through a lack of, of animals eating the food that they're normally supposed to be eating. Omega-3 just is not in our diet anymore. We have too much omega-6, which is in grains, and when that ratio gets off, our body moves towards inflammation. Um, a lot of the research that we learn on vitamin D talks about omega-3 at the same time because they come from the same source. Uh, vitamin D was originally discovered when they were looking at cod liver oil. Cod liver oil used to be given to people to help prevent rickets. It had a lot of different benefits and one of the ingredients in cod liver oil is vitamin D. So a lot of the studies that we read on omega-3 also talk about vitamin D. They're kind of linked together. It all comes from fish oil. So the benefits of omega-3, uh, it helps our brain run well, so it's gonna, we're gonna have better memory and concentration, less depression, smarter kids, uh, better heart function. There's tons of benefits, tons of studies out there on, on, on the benefits of omega-3 with heart function. It lowers our blood pressure, decreases our chances for heart attacks, improves our cholesterol, we have less atherosclerosis, it's an anti-inflammatory so we have less inflammation, less pain, and better immune health and better digestion. So a lot of these same benefits we'll see with, with vitamin D because they really work hand in hand. And so what is vitamin D? Does anybody, anybody know what vitamin D is? I mean, where does it come from or what, it, what, is, what is it? Sun. Yeah. Sun. Right, exactly. Rays. Right, so it, we wouldn't necessarily need to take in vitamin D because our body can make it, it itself. As, the, as you're in the sun, the sun converts cholesterol in our body to vitamin D. It's actually a hormone, it's not really a vitamin. It's actually, right, it's actually, yeah, it's, a, it's actually a hormone. Our body makes it itself when we're exposed to the sun. Trouble is, nowadays, there's less people outside more people in, indoors working on computers, more people sitting in classrooms. Uh, people are not getting outside the same way that they used to, so we're getting less vitamin D than we used to. Unfortunately, where we live in Minnesota, the sun's just not at the correct angle to help us make vitamin D for a lot of months out of the year. And so between October and April, the sun never even really gets to the correct angle to even help us make vitamin D. And so. What does vitamin D do? It basically improves absorption of minerals like calcium and phosphorus. And so vitamin D, we always knew that it was good for the bones. It's because it helps our body absorb calcium. And that's why if you look at milk, vitamin D is in, is in milk. It's in a lot of, it's supplemented with a lot of things that you'll find a lot of calcium supplements have vitamin D added because vitamin D helps us absorb the calcium. It also, also helps us absorb phosphorus. It regulates cell growth and differentiation. So as our body, as the cells are constantly dividing in our body, if the cells are dividing out of control, anybody know what that's called? Cancer. Yeah, cells that are dividing out of control is cancer. And so if our cells are being regulated and they're dividing within control, we're, our body is regulating those cells and they're dividing at, a, at an appropriate rate, we can deal with those cells. When things get out of control, that's where we start to develop tumors and cancers. It helps regulate insulin production. And so if our insulin gets out of control, we know what that's called? Yeah, Diabetes. Diabetes. Yeah. And basically we found over 200 genes in the body are regulated by vitamin D. Most cells in the body have a receptor on the cell for vitamin D. There's two different, two different hormones that circulate throughout the body that most cells have a receptor for. One is thyroid hormone, so when our thyroid is off, it really affects almost everything that we do, and the other one's vitamin D. And it, it, it's a hormone, it's not a vitamin, so that's why all these cells are, are, we're finding that they all have receptors for it. So the more that they look into this, the more they're finding that vitamin D helps out. 
So vitamin D is called the sunshine vitamin because the sun makes it. How much sun do we need? So the first step is we want to check the UV index. And so if you go to weather.com or you watch the weather channel in the morning or the news, one of the things that you'll see, one of the lines there, it says UV index. No one really pays attention to it because it's not really that important. It's not like the wind or the or or how hot is it going to be or is it raining. We're looking at the UV index. And that basically tells us how fast are we going to burn if we're outside. And so in order to make vitamin D, we have to have a UV index of at least three. Fortunately, in Minnesota, our UV index never gets over two between October and April, just statistically as they look. Today it was a two because we had a nice, clear, sunny day, and so we checked the UV index today and it was a two. Last week it was cloudy and it was a zero. We checked the UV index in Florida last week and it was a zero. It was a cloudy day in Florida, so it was it was a UV index of zero. So you, when it's a cloudy day, no sunshine is coming down, we're not making vitamin D no matter what. The next step is, what skin type are you? And so I put a little chart, it's on the first page here. Um, you see a bunch of different skin types, and your skin type can kind of, can kind of vary throughout the summer and throughout the season. So skin type one is you always burn, you never tan. Skin type two would be you burn easily, you rarely tan. Three would be you occasionally burn, you slowly tan. And four would be you rarely burn, rapidly tan. And then five and six is you never burn, you're always dark. And so part of that is gonna be just your natural skin pigmentation. <coughs> part of it is gonna be how much sun are you exposed to. So obviously if I'm in the sun all summer long and my skin is tan, it's going to be a lot harder for me to get burned than if I haven't been in the sun all winter long and now I go out in the sun, I'm going to burn very easily. So how much, how tan you are will make a difference. If, you, if your skin pigmentation is darker, it's going to be harder for you to make vitamin D. And so we look at the UV index, anywhere from zero to two, you're not making any vitamin D no matter what skin type you are. Between three and five of the UV index, we can go down and we can look at your skin type 1, you'd only have to be in the sun for 10 to 15 minutes. Now this chart is based on having 50 to 75 percent of your skin exposed to the sun. So that's not just your hands sticking out in the sun, that's not just your ears, that's like wearing a swimsuit that you're out in the sun. So that's how much sun exposure that they're looking at. And we would need to do this three times a week in order to make the adequate amount of vitamin D to be circulating in our body. Now, if we're 50, we have to double those numbers because as we age, our body's ability to use and mobilize vitamin D decreases. So it, it, we need to be in the sun longer to make that same amount of vitamin D. Um, some people say, well, can I go in a tanning bed? A tanning bed, most of them are around, the UV is 7 to 8, and they do make some tanning beds that light bulbs, they have basically a, a double uh, UVB ray. So I use one that yeah, won't burn you on whatever. Yeah. So the the that's we don't want to get burned. So yeah. getting burned is never a good idea. As yeah. our body as we get burned, our body's ability to make vitamin D decreases rapidly. So if you've gotten burned, you, once you're burned you don't make vitamin D that de that decreases our body's ability to make vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And your body will never make too much vitamin D if we're out in the sun what happens is it just stops making vitamin D once we've made enough. So with using sunscreen, we'd want to, if we're going to go by this chart, once we were in the sun long enough to make our vitamin D, that would be when we would put on the sunscreen so we don't need to get any more. We don't want to start with the sunscreen.